So you understood that sequence numbers should be randomly chosen, random initial sequence numbers. Again, there is a problem with the sequence numbers. The problem is um, we have only 2 power 32 sequence numbers, which means uh, the total number of sequence numbers available are 4G sequence numbers. 2 power 32 is nothing but 4G sequence, 4G, right? So if every byte that is going out of TCP, if every byte is going to take one sequence number, then how many bytes can I uniquely number and send them? So using 4G sequence numbers, I can send only 4GB data. I cannot send more than that, right? But then uh, a application may give TCP more than 4G amount of data. For example, if you are downloading a movie, which is uh, for, you know, more than 4G. So let us say it is 4GB plus one byte is there. All these 4 GB are going to take one sequence number each and then the next the next byte extra byte present that has to take a sequence number but then you are saying that I have only 4 G sequence numbers I, I don't have more then what should you do you should again wrap around and use the same number it is called wrap, wrapping around so which means I have 0 to 2 power 0 to 2 power 32 minus 1 if I start using from 0, I can go till 2 power 32 and I can send 4 GB and after sending this entire 4 GB of data, all the sequence numbers are over and again I have to come back and use the same sequence number 0. This process is called wrap around. So wrap around will it uh, change if I start from a random initial sequence number which means the number of sequence numbers available will they get affected if I start from some random number. So if I have the total scale of numbers as 0 to 2 power 32 minus 1 and if I start from a random initial sequence number somewhere will the concept of wraparound change which means do I get lesser numbers or more numbers see this. Now I will start from this random initial sequence number and go till this point and after that anyways I will start from 0 and again come here right therefore wherever you start from how many numbers you can use you could use 2 power 32 which is nothing but 4G sequence numbers which means you can send out 4 GB uh, bytes 4 gigabytes uniquely by numbering uniquely now after sending all that if you have to send one more byte then definitely you should reuse the same number which has been already used right this problem is called wrap around so wrap around is nothing but using up all the sequence numbers present and then reusing the same sequence number which has already been used is called wrap around and uh, yeah, from this we get a time called as wrap around time wrap around time means time taken to wrap around is called wrap around time time taken to wrap around means if you start from sequence number some sequence number now after how much time are you going to again use the same sequence number so what does this wrap around time depend on you understood the concept wrap around means again using the same sequence number which has already been used is wrap around and the wrap around time is the time taken to repeat the sequence number which means if i start from here after how long am i going to get back and use the same number this total amount of time is called wrap around time so what does this wrap around time depend on right so or if you want to you know take an example i mean if you want to correlate with some other thing let us assume that there is a classroom in classroom i am having let us say a bowl of chocolates and uh, i the problem is every every student who is going out of the class is supposed to take a chocolate and then only go out right or let us say uh, it a token I'm, I'm giving some tokens and everyone who is going out should take a token and then go out without the token they should not go out right then what I do is I have a box of tokens everyone going out will pick a token and go out pick a token and go out then how many people can go out like that only equal to the number of tokens in the box isn't it now if all the tokens in the box are over then what should I do I should again use the token which is already been given which means after going out I should collect the tokens from them and again redistribute it so the process of repeating the first token from the first student so that I can give it give to the next student is called wrap around similarly here the concept is every byte going out of your computer is going to take one number and go out right 
therefore all the numbers are suddenly going to get exhausted now after every number gets exhausted then we are again going to reuse the same number that is called wrap around and the time taken for this procedure to happen is i mean which means the time taken to hit the same number is called wrap around time now my question is what does that wrap around time depend on let's see that now let's now see uh, how this uh, problem of wrap around time occurs and what is the wrap around time so what is wrap around time the time taken to finish using up all the sequence numbers how many sequence numbers we have 2 power 32 sequence numbers i have so depending on the sequence number field this wrap around time will vary in tcp i have 2 power 32 sequence numbers so wrap around time is nothing but the time taken to eat up all the sequence numbers every byte is going to eat up one sequence number right so let's take this problem now uh, you can just guess first going ahead can you guess uh, what are the factors on which wrap around time will depend on wrap around time depends on the bandwidth which means the rate at which the bytes are going out is the rate at which we consume the sequence numbers therefore the faster the bytes go out the more sequence numbers we eat right so keep that in mind now wrap around time depends on bandwidth so if bandwidth is 1 mbps so note that bandwidth is 1 megabytes per second it is not bits per second right if bandwidth is 1 mbps then i want to derive what is wrap around time how to derive it is like this so 1 mbps means in one second i can send out 1 mb which means 10 power 6 bytes will go out in one second right so what does that mean 10 power 6 sequence numbers will go out in one second this is one second right so if 10 power 6 sequence numbers go out in one second then one sequence number will go out or one sequence number will be consumed in 1 by 10 power 6 seconds isn't it then how many sequence numbers i have 2 power 32 so how long will it take for me to consume all the 2 power 32 sequence numbers time taken is 2 power 32 divided by 10 power 6 seconds so if you compute it you will get somewhere around i think uh, 4962.96 seconds or something so i don't know exact figure uh, but i think it is around 4900 4, seconds or 4200 somewhere around 4000 seconds right so what does this mean in order to use up so you please uh, compute it with uh, using your calci you please compute what is 2 power 32 and then you divide with 10 power 6 i'll just check it once i'll just check it just so the number 2 power 32 is this 4294967 something like this you can use your calcis in exam i think in exam calcis are not allowed but anyway in the computer itself there will be inbuilt calculator you can use the cursor and then uh, you know operate it uh, but uh, what i mean to say is 2 power 32 is this number and 2 power 32 divided by 10 power 6 remember this 2 power 32 is because sequence numbers are 32 bits and it is 10 power 6 because it is from the bandwidth and i told you that bandwidth is already measured as 10 powers right and uh, it is it is uh, 2 power 32 is directly from the sequence numbers so what do you get we get that 4296 dot something 927296 nearly 4000 this many seconds so what do you understand from that if the bandwidth is 1 mbps if you start from 1 mbps bandwidth then the wrap around time is this much therefore wrap around time is this much which means if if you use a sequence number particular sequence number now you will use the same sequence number after 4296 uh, uh, seconds and uh, 4296 seconds is how many minutes you can calculate it you can divide with 60 and find it out but anyway that is a very big number so which means if you use a sequence number now the chances that you use the same sequence number for a byte outgoing byte is uh, after 4 to 9 6 seconds and uh, in today's internet there is a concept called as lifetime lifetime means if you send a packet now that will be alive for three minutes which means in worst case 
after three minutes it will reach the destination if you send it now so lifetime is three minutes in today's internet which means 180 seconds so lifetime means if you use a sequence number now that sequence number will be available even after 180 seconds but then you are not going to use the same sequence number until 4296 seconds therefore uh, even okay the concept is like this what i'm say, trying to say is if you use a sequence number let us say 100 now then by the time it reaches the destination the worst case in worst case it is going to be 180 seconds right and you are going to generate the same sequence number after 4296 therefore even if you are using the same sequence number again even if two bytes are, or two packets are getting the same sequence number but the chances are that the first the first byte with the sequence number 100 will be dead long before the second uh, second sequence number 100 has been generated therefore as long as wrap around time is wrap around time is greater than lifetime we don't have any problem okay if wrap around time is less than lifetime then we'll get a problem as long as wrap around time is greater than lifetime which means as long as the first one is alive if we don't generate the same sequence number we don't have any problem otherwise if the first one is alive and when it is alive if you send the second one with the same number then there is a problem it is like this uh, if you buy a movie ticket right how long is it going to be valid the lifetime is three hours within these three hours you should again gen should not generate the same same ticket the reason is two people will go to the same seat and try to sit there that is the problem similarly if you generate a, a sequence number now when the first byte is still alive you should not send the second one with the sequence number so how is how much is the lifetime there for a movie three hours which means after three hours if you again generate the same ticket number then there is no problem but within the same uh, three hours of time you should you should not generate the same ticket similarly here also when the first byte is alive you should not send the second byte i mean uh, some other byte with the same number otherwise what happens is at the destination both of them will go at the same time and then destination doesn't understand which one is the first uh, byte and which one is the next uh, byte with the 100 so it doesn't know where to place them now let's see that that kind of problem where we might get this collision right so assume that instead of bandwidth being 1 mbps if the bandwidth is 1 gbps which means 1 gigabyte per second then how will it change how will the entire wrap around time change in one second i can send 1 gigabytes which means 10 power 9 bytes will be generated or 10 power 9 bytes can be sent out in one second which means 10 power 9 sequence numbers will be consumed in one second then in one sequence number will be consumed in 1 by 10 power 9 seconds right therefore how long will it take for us to consume 2 power 32 sequence number that is nothing but the wrap around time therefore wrap around time in this case is this one divided by 10 power 9 this one divided by 10 power 9 so what will be that number if you compute it this one divided by 10 power 9 is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 4.2 4 point two four point two nine four seconds something like this which means nearly four seconds so what do you understand from this if the bandwidth is increased then uh, the rate at which i reuse the sequence numbers is very fast very rapid the reason is now the bytes are going out very fastly and uh, every byte going out is going to take a sequence number and because of which all the sequence numbers are over very fast in how long time in how much time four seconds which means if you use a sequence number 100 now then just in four seconds you have to again use the same sequence number 100 right but the problem is in this four seconds the first one and the second one both are alive which means because of some delay it might go now so i told you that in today's internet if you send a packet now it might sometimes go to the destination at uh, as late as 180 seconds so there could be uh, this one even if it doesn't go late then also what happens is after every four seconds 100 is sent and after every four seconds one same number 100 is sent then at the destination there are many packets which are having sequence numbers 100 
and the destination doesn't know which one is first hundred which one is second hundred, which one is third hundred on the way they might get jumbled and uh, we don't know where to place them therefore it is a problem now what is the problem here wrap around time is very much less than lifetime so whenever wrap around time is very much less than right uh, lifetime then at the destination there is a problem because there will be more than one byte with the same sequence number at the same time now how are you going to solve it so why, what is the reason for this problem uh, we have increased this, this bandwidth because of the increase in bandwidth we got this problem therefore what could you say i mean what do you think is the solution you might think that don't increase the bandwidth beyond some limit isn't it yes we could do that but uh, actually we are dying for bandwidth isn't it bandwidth is uh, very very less and it is very scarce now given a chance we want to increase the bandwidth to infinity which means we want to uh, send a packet as quickly as possible and we never want to underutilize the bandwidth available so since you cannot handle this problem you cannot ask the client to reduce their bandwidth they are dying for bandwidth right so what is one more solution see if the bandwidth is very less we are we are quickly eating up the sequence numbers and sequence numbers are getting over within 180 seconds then what is the other solution instead of decreasing the bandwidth increase the sequence numbers how can I increase the sequence numbers by increasing the bits in the sequence number field so with using 32 bits i got this wrap around time to be 4 seconds if i increase the number of bits in the sequence number field then the time might be improved isn't it so if i use 33 bits then the sequence number should uh, you know should be doubled if the sequence numbers are doubled then uh, the time should be doubled like that let's see how it could be done now now let's try to attack this problem where uh, wrap around time is less than lifetime so whenever wrap around time is less than lifetime what is happening is when the first packet is still alive with some sequence number we are actually generating more packets with the same sequence number and all of them are going to the destination at the same time and creating confusion chaos right now how can i solve that problem one solution is you are asking me to i mean uh, generally people at classrooms they've asked me to uh, decrease the bandwidth but then uh, we are not going to decrease the bandwidth the reason is uh, we want even more bandwidth then what is the other solution increase the number of sequence numbers how many exactly do you need i don't want to over overuse the sequence numbers or over allocate the sequence numbers how many extra sequence numbers do you need so that i could cope up with this problem that is that is the question let us assume that bandwidth is 1 gbps that is the bandwidth and uh, what does it mean in every second i am sending out one gigabyte right then lifetime is 180 seconds in today's internet which means if i send out a packet uh, that might surprise me after coming at you know after 180 seconds so lots of surprises are possible then in that case how can you uh, see that uh, the number of the, the number of sequence numbers available will be will be sufficient so that i could survive for 180 seconds without using any uh, repeating the sequence number so uh, the problem is simple so what should be actually done is I don't want any wraparound to occur within this lifetime which means within this 180 seconds I don't want to reuse the same sequence number uh, which I have already used so how should I do that how could I do that if I have enough sequence numbers in such a way that the number of sequence numbers used up in 180 seconds are already available and there is no need of using reusing the same sequence number then I can avoid the wraparound within lifetime see this concept is somewhat confusing so you could re rewind the video and again listen to this or i am repeating it one more time see this i am in some other way it is like this so uh, i don't want to reuse the tokens i as i said in the previous example every student going out is going to take a token and go out and if i don't want to reuse the token then how many tokens i should have at least i should have the tokens which is equal to the number of students in the class similarly here in 180 seconds how many ever bytes going out i don't want to reuse the uh, same sequence number then what should i do i should see that the number of sequence numbers available will be at least equal to the number of bytes which are going out in 180 seconds simple 
the classroom number of students should be equal to number of tokens then I will never use the reuse the same token similarly here also the number of bytes going out uh, that should be equal to the number of tokens available or number of sequence numbers available if I see that happen then there is no problem here right so now I want to check out in 180 seconds how many sequence numbers I, 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 I am going to consume so how can I derive it is the bandwidth is 1 gbps what does that mean in one second i am sending out 1 gigabyte which means in one second i am consuming 1 giga sequence numbers right then in 180 sequence in 180 seconds how many sequence numbers will you consume if you can find it out that is enough right in 180 seconds i can consume 180 into g sequence numbers right so I am going to consume 180 into uh, 1G sequence numbers in 180 seconds. Then if I don't want any wraparound to occur in this 180 seconds, it means that these many sequence numbers should be available with me, right? Therefore, how many sequence numbers should be available? These many sequence numbers should be available so that there will be no wraparound within this time. So minimum sequence numbers required minimum sequence numbers required to avoid to avoid wraparound within lifetime to avoid wraparound within lifetime is 180 into 1g sequence numbers if i need these many sequence numbers then how many bits are required in sequence number field apply a log log 180 into what is g here g is from the bandwidth therefore it is 10 power 9 180 into 10 power 9 base 2 seal right so how much is this 180 into 10 power base 2 seal is i think you will find it out to be 42 bits 42 bits or something you please work it out you can use the calculus and calculate it so what does it mean in order to survive this situation i need at least 42 bits so that i can cope up with this uh, wraparound which is happening within the lifetime right so if i need 42 bit sequence number right 42 bit sequence number but then I, how many bits are i have only 32 bits right then how many extra bits i need 42 minus 32 is 10 bits now i need extra 10 bits in order to cope up with this situation when the bandwidth is very high but then where do i get these 10 bits from there is a field called as option look at your uh, header at the end there is a field called as options in that options field you can use this 10 bits so 32 bits you put them in the uh, sequence number field and the remaining 10 bits you can put them in the uh, options the most significant 10 bits most significant means uh, the left side part you can put it in the options right so we are going to put it in options and we call it as timestamp so timestamp is nothing but the extra bits which are required which have to be kept in the options right so that is how we could solve this problem so in exam they might ask you uh, given some bandwidth and given some lifetime what is the minimum number of sequence numbers required just you multiply that and then you get the number of sequence numbers required and you apply the log then you get the number of bits required in sequence number field so if you want the formula no, no don't use any formulas directly you can derive it this way if you want any formula then it is nothing but lifetime into bandwidth you can apply log base 2 this is the minimum number of sequence numbers required so that there will be no wraparound within lifetime so always remember in every tcp connection wraparound time should be less than lifetime if wraparound time sorry wraparound time should be greater than lifetime if wraparound time is less than lifetime then there is a problem right okay so wraparound time should be always greater than lifetime if wraparound time is less than lifetime then we need to increase the sequence numbers right and this is how everything works